I'm Emil Björnsson, a professor at KTH in Sweden, and I will tell you about how to achieve beam focusing with distributed arrays. And this is joint work with Alva, Öslem and some other people in my team. So antenna arrays are used on base stations in order to do things like adaptive beam forming, so you can direct signals towards user devices in particular directions, but also for spatial multiplexing, where you can send multiple data streams towards the same device, and to different devices at the same time. And this is also known as multiple input, multiple output. So the base station antennas that we are using in 5G have this form factor here, roughly half a meter wide, and they contain maybe 32 or 64 different antennas. And we call it massive MIMO because there is a large number of antennas compared to the past. But if we zoom out a little bit, then when you deploy this base station on typical locations, even if they have many antennas, they look quite small. And therefore, we are still doing what is known as far field beam forming, creating beams towards users in angular directions, for example. However, there is this possibility of building really extremely large aperture arrays, with, of course, more antennas, but in particular, they are electrically large. They are filling a large portion of your field of view and then you might be able to do near field beam focusing, where signals are confined around the user. And this is a sketch that we drew already in 2019 in a paper, but the question is, is this really practically possible to do? Well, let me give you some basics on beam forming and beam focusing. So when you're transmitting a signal from a particular antenna array towards a target user at a distant set, there will be a width of the beam. And traditional formula for the beam width, in particular the free dB beam width, what is the angular interval where we will have at least half of the beam forming gain, it is equal to a constant here, roughly one times the wavelength divided by the width of the antenna. And this happens regardless of how close or far away the user is. The angular beam width always have this formula. What we are interested in is beam focusing, whether we can have a finite depth also in the distance domain. And in this case, as people are talking about the radiative near field and the Fraunhofer distance, which has this formula, two times the aperture length of your array squared divided by the wavelength. Can we do beam focusing whenever the distance set is smaller than the Fraunhofer distance? No, that is not the case but one can derive the depth of focus of a beam when we have a user at a distance set. And the free to be beam focus range is given by a formula that we derived in 2021. And it certainly depends on the Fraunhofer distance. And there is one formula where the beam starts and when, where it ends. And one can see that the upper limit becomes positive and finite when the distance to the user is smaller than the Fraunhofer distance divided by 10. So in these cases, we will have a beam that is both having a finite width and a finite depth. And that is what we call beam focusing. And this is something that can potentially be used for spatial multiplexing, both in angle and depth. So for a 5G typical array, the beams that we are sending, they are not starting directly at the transmitter, but they start somewhere at the Fraunhofer distance divided by 10. And then they continue as angular beams towards our users who are located in the far field. But if we can make the arrays much bigger, then the Fraunhofer distance will be bigger, so their beam starts much further away from the base station, and then we can potentially serve users at different distances but in the same angle, using the beam focusing feature. So this will allow us both to send multiple signals in, at different distances and potentially even send multiple signals to the same user. So the main thing here is that this channel becomes richer because we have both angle and depth information. So the Fraunhofer distance can be computed for different setups depending on how big the array is and what the frequency is. So in a typical 5G scenario, it might only be 40 meters or so. And then if you go up in frequency, it can be 400 meters. And if you have a really large array, it can be many kilometers. But the main question in this talk is, will we see this kind of beam focusing effects in 6G? And 6G is expected to operate in frequency range free between say seven and 24 gigahertz, a new range between the midband using 5G and the millimeter wave in 5G. And if we take an example, we can 
probably believe that the base station will keep similar kind of physical form factors as we have in 5G. So how many antennas would fit in a box like this? Well, at the largest frequency that's actually being considered now for 60, 15 gigahertz, we can squeeze in 48 antennas in a box like this of half a meter width. And then the Fraunhofer distance is 23. Divide that by 10 and you get only a few meters. So at the typical user distance, which is 30 meters or more from the base station, well, you will see a classical kind of beam. And this is how we illustrated here. We had the relative beam forming gain between 0 and 1. And if the gain is between 0 0.5 and 1, well, then we are within the 3 dB beam width and beam depth. So it looks like beam focusing is not something we will actually come across in the 6G era. But that only going to be the case if we deploy antennas like this. There are other options. A possible workaround would be that we go from having one array to having multiple subarrays that we deploy on the same location. And I think this is something that operators can actually consider doing because they're already used to deploying sector antennas on the same location. So why can't you have multiple panels pointing in the same direction at the same physical location? This resembles a bit of about the stereoscopic vision that we have with our two eyes. That thanks to having two eyes, we can actually see some depth information from the observation, even if you only have two different panels. So mathematically, this means that we would deploy two uniform linear rays, each of them having n antennas, and they might have a normal half wavelength spacing. But then there is going to be a separation delta between them, which could be at the order of meters. And each of these ones might be due on match filtering or maximum ratio transmission towards the user. And then the superposition of these two beams is creating some kind of focusing effect that I'm sketching here. What will actually happen with the beam pattern in these cases? Does it resemble what we will have with one large array? No, not exactly. So here is what we were showing before with just one panel with half a meter width. And if we are cutting into two halves and move them five meters apart instead, and we're focusing the beam from two different directions, we are getting some kind of focusing effect here. You can see the yellowish beam forming gain area is only around the user location. And if we zoom in, there seems to be some kind of ripple effect here. So we certainly have a finite depth. So we are focusing the signal in the distance domain, but in the um, width domain, we have this kind of strange ripples, which is something we started to analyze in the recent paper. So we had to have a mathematical characterization and we considered, okay, here is the focus location of the user. And then we have another sample user that we are moving across a line that is parallel to the place where we have deployed our two different arrays. We can then compute the normalized beam forming gain between zero and one for every location along this line. And here is a formula that we're computing in a new paper from the Asilma conference last year. And it contains some different components. There is one sync function that is resembling what you would normally get from just one array. So it essentially is working as a envelope of this beam pattern. And it is what one N antenna array, one of them would have been generating if it is transmitting only towards the user. And then there is some kind of ripple factor, which is a cosine that is varying more rapidly. And it depends on the wavelength and the distance and things like the distances between the two different centers of the array here, delta bar, which is showing up in this factor. So here's an illustration of what we will be seeing as beamforming gain when we are moving around the sample user. And we have the maximum gain where we are focusing the signal. And then the envelope or upper bound factor is the blue line here. And then the ripple factor, the cosine, is giving us this additional ripples up and down here. So this is in the case where the two arrays is two meters apart from each other. And we see that we are getting quite rapid ripples. If we define the free to be beam width as the interval where we have a normalized beam forming gain between 0 0.5 and 1, well, then we will have multiple ripples inside that one. So that could be a problem if the users are moving around. But as long as the user is at the focus point, it's great.
And if we are reducing the spacing, eventually the ripples will become fewer and fewer. And in this case, when we have a 0.72 meter separation, there is only one ripple inside the 3 dB beam width. So it actually becomes this interval only here. So we have a really beam focusing. So if we illustrate that case, you can see that there is only one focusing place here where we have a yellowish color. So we can do a very clean beam focusing by having two antenna rays that each of them can only do far field beam forming and then we separate them 0.2 meters apart and all of a sudden they can do beam focusing together. So in conclusion, we can use distribute array to create beam focusing and in a distance domain, it's a total aperture between the outer parts here of the two panel that really matters. We can achieve the beam focusing that we're looking for. The price to pay for having a hole in our array is that the beam width uh, becomes more complicated. So we will have some fast ripples due to the constructive and destructive interference between the beams coming from two different directions. And that could be problematic in some scenarios, but as long as the user is static and we are focusing at the right places, it shouldn't be a problem. The envelope of the beam pattern is determined by the beam pattern of our single array and the ripples is determined by the distance between the two arrays. You can find all the mathematical details in our paper from the Asilma conference 2024, achieving beam focusing via two separated uniform linear arrays. And if you want to dig deeper into this topic, you should check out the journal version of this conference paper, which you can find on archive. Thank you very much for listening.